Hey, it's Tim here. In this video, I'm going to be touching on a new feature in 2021.2, which is the collections. Now, collections have actually been in an open public beta for a while now, but they've actually taken on a lot of feedback from users over the last uh, few months, and they've incorporated it into what they're sort of doing as their first official release, which is what we have for us in 2021.2. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is show you how to find collections, how to create them, add items to them, uh, remove items from collections. And then lastly, I'm going to show you how permissions work with collections. It's actually quite a smart way of working with them. Uh, it's very well thought through. So I'll go through that at the very end. So I'm going to put timestamps in the video so you can access all of that very easily. Um, but let's let's get stuck in. So the first thing to uh, bear in mind is that, you know, in 2021.2, they've actually added quite a lot of new asset types. So we've got lenses that are being added and now we have something new called collections. And collections get their own dedicated space here on the left hand side. I think this is quite smart because what Tableau is starting to realize is that, listen, every single analyst has their own world. And essentially, we want to be able to uh, access our own version of the world whenever we go to Tableau server. Previously, you went to Tableau server and you saw what whatever was, was, was made for everyone. You, you sort of had no customized view. So collections are sort of the first way to do that. So now if I hit collections here, you'll see that I have no collection set up. So it's completely banked. So we're going to go ahead and create a new one and just show you how this works. I'm going to go ahead and create a new collection just by clicking the new collection option. And the first thing you do is you see it just creates a collection straight away and it names it after me by default. So that's really sort of important. And the thing is, is they're private by default. I'll come to that in a second. But essentially, here's the first hint. Tableau is letting you create your own little world in this and the sort of the big signal here is that this is private okay you can obviously star it so it's in your favorites of the top right hand side menu if you want to do that you can share your collections i'll come to that in a second and you get these other sort of controls you can share you can see the details rename it permissions change who the owner is all of that great stuff now you can also give it a description i'll just do that here and you'll see here that once I give it a description and I save that, that's now persisted. And you can go in and update that and that's sort of nice to have. But essentially, you're sort of creating this space. So you've got to really think about what goes into that description. Now, the next thing is what goes into a collection. So basically, the, the, the best way to think about collections is tags, but like a lot better, just, just monumentally much better. So tags have actually always existed in Tableau. I'm not going to sort of break away and show you what those are, but essentially you've always been able to use tags to classify content. And the great thing about tags is they've existed across all asset types. So I can tag a workbook, I can tag a data source, I can tag a project. All of those things have sort of been able to be tagged. And now what you can do with uh, collections is essentially do the same thing. But instead of using tags, which sort of work like hashtags, instead you're creating a space which allows you to sort of bring content from lots of different places. So the big hint here is that they want you to go and explore content to bring it in. So it's sort of unintuitive. It'd be great to have like a, a way of adding content in here. But the, the button here just basically sends you to the explore tab. The explore tab is exactly the same as this one. So essentially just go on to server anywhere and go find the content that you really want to add to your collection. So um, if you go here to the 2021.2, I can add this project to my collection. So I'm just going to go click on that and you'll see that it looks for the server and sees oh, what collections are available. And if I don't find the one that I like, I can actually go ahead and create a new one right here. I'll call this test collection. And you'll see that I think it actually puts that content straight into that collection. So you'll see that it's automatically ticked and it tells me that this is new, the one that I've just created. But actually, I'm going to choose uh, this one as well. So you can put things in multiple collections. So this is where things get really cool, because um, if you've got something that's super important, you can put it in multiple collections and just send the link to the collection to one people. And then every time you add things into the collection, everything's just going to be in one place. So that's a really sort of nice quality of life improvement. You can also search this. If I search Tim, it obviously uh, will search um, sort of just my content. But because there's such little content on here, it sort of doesn't work. If I search test, you'll see that works. The reason uh, Tim came up there is because I created both of these. So that's why it's coming up uh, twice there. So let's go ahead and just take uh, both of these collections and just click add. We'll add the contents of the collection. And there you go. We've added a project to a collection. Now I'm going to go back into the Explore tab. I'll go back into 2021.2 and you'll see that I have a bunch of different things here. So let's go to this list view. 
So as you can see here, I have a range of different things. And what is interesting here is you can't add a lens to a collection, but you can add some of these other things. So if I take these two here, you go to actions, you can see that I get the option to add a collection. But if I tick the lens, you'll see that that, does, that option to add collections actually disappears. So not everything can go into collection, but most things can go into collection. So now that we've ticked those two, let's go ahead and add those to a collection. Now, the last thing I want to add to my collection is a prep flow because of course, Tableau prep is another sort of capability. So I'd love to be able to add my flows to this. So let's go back to the explore tab and let's go to my little drop down that shows me all the different kinds of content that I have. So I've got flows here. So let's go into the flows and let's add a couple of these. Notice how some of these are still in the draft stage. I never finished them. So I'll go ahead and add all of them to my collection again. So you can start to see the power of this. You know, if you're using Tableau Server every single day, um, you can actually go and create your own little sort of collection and make it really useful. And then if that collection is useful for people, you can obviously go and uh, add, add, add more. Now, unable to add items to uh, one collection, I think it's because these are in draft. So let's try that again. Uh, I think that's probably the case. I think I was, I was maybe pushing my luck too much. Yeah, that's correct. So um, I wasn't able to add the drafts to my collection, but I was able to add the finished flow to my collection. So that's all good. Let's go in here and let's look at something else. Let's see what else we can add. Let's add a metric to our collection. So you'll see we here we have a bunch of different metrics. I'll add some of my favorite metrics. I'll go ahead and add it to my collection. So you can start to see here, the way I'm doing this is I'm going to the asset and I'm adding them to my collection. I don't have to do it using this grouped method. I can go to any one of these, uh, whatever view you have. So I can hit these three dots and you'll see that I can add it to a collection there. If I'm in grid view, uh, some of you might be using the grid view predominantly instead of the uh, list view. Then again, you can add to collections just like that. And in this case, everything here should already be added, but if it's not been added, then it, you'll see that there. Now in this little toast menu that appears in green, you do get a link to go to the collection once you've added something there. So if you go ahead to the collection, you'll see that now my collection's pretty busy and I've got a bunch of different things. I've got my flow, I've got my metric, I've got my workbook. Everything here is really nicely laid out. Now, I was sort of hoping we get a bit more control to customize this, use metrics to, you know, have big, uh, big, big ass numbers, bands on the top and dashboards below and just sort of create some context. We saw some really nice prototypes of this at Tableau conference last year. I'll try and put that up on screen. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have that in this first release. Maybe that's where Tableau is heading. But nevertheless, whether you're in list view or grid view, this is a really nice way of collecting all of your content in one place. So I've shown you how to find the collections. I've shown you how to create one. I've shown you how to add content to the collection. Now I'm going to show you how to remove content from the collection. So what you can do is you can just take any of these three once you're in here and actually you can just go here to the actions and remove them from the collection. So this is by far the easiest way to do this. And when you remove something from a collection, it's again instantaneous and the page refreshes and boom, you've removed them. Super, super simple. Now, the final thing to look at is of course permissions. Now, what collections don't do is they don't break the permissions model in Tableau, okay? So by virtue, any collection that's created is by default private to the person who, uh, who created them. So what has to happen is that person has to share them for them to be visible to other people. So if I go in here and I share stuff and I just say, uh, send it to my other version of myself and I'll say, hey, uh, one access and I hit share. What, I, what I've essentially done there is uh, sent off the link, but what I haven't done is grant the permissions. And so one nice thing with the collections is if you do share something with someone, it automatically pops up the permissions window so you can grant that person permission. So now that I've shared it with the user, I'm gonna give them access to actually look at the thing. So the sharing interface is just sending them a link and then the permissions interface that comes up afterwards is actually giving them access to see the collection. Now, if we go into a little bit more detail, you'll notice that the little private icon has disappeared because I've shared it with someone. It's no longer private. So now that's gone out to the world. It's no longer private. I can go to these three dots and go down here to permissions and manage my permissions so I can see essentially what's going on. So let's go ahead and click in permissions box and see what's going on. So you can see here that I've given view access to one other person, okay? 
And um, the other version of myself hasn't actually logged in and sort of looked at the permissions and accepted the link. So I think that's why it's not showing up here. But I can, of course, add different people. I can add groups to my permissions uh, and I can go and say view. And that's really the only permission here. They can only view permissions. Now, you're probably wondering, well, what happens if I put something in a collection that someone doesn't have access to in that object's own permission? They won't see it. So it's super simple. If you don't have access to see something and it gets added to a collection that you have access to, you just won't see it. It just won't appear. So that's a really important dynamic to be aware of. That's kind of cool though, because you can sort of create these collections which are focused on a, pro on a, on a project. So you, for, for example, in fast moving consumer goods, it's sometimes important for finance and sales to have access to the same content, but to see slightly different things. What you could do here is create a collection for the business area they're managing. Let's take, for example, biscuits. And then in that collection, you could have content for um, finance people, content for salespeople. In those individual workbooks, manage those permissions so they can only see their respective things, but share one collection to that group of people. So you give everyone one link, but you're actually managing the permissions of what they see once they get there in the respective content, which just makes things so much better. It makes having duplicate versions of content everywhere sort of not necessary. And it also makes permissioning more enjoyable because you now have another dynamic that you can use to separate out content. So that's pretty much um, collections in a nutshell. I've covered permissions. I've shown you how to create them. I've shown you how to you know, set them up. Last thing I can show you is how to delete a collection. So of course, if you go to these three dots and you go to delete, um, you get that option. Now, this is a pretty nuclear thing, so be really careful before you do that. Um, the other thing you can do is you can change who the owner is. So I could, for example, give someone else the ability to manage this permission. This is handy if you're moving on and you wanna give stewardship to someone else, or you've been promoted and you wanna give it to someone else, you want them to be able to manage it. That's, that's perfectly sort of a possible thing. But nevertheless, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and just hit delete. When we delete the collection, everything that goes with it goes, but the content stays exactly where it was. So now you see here, I'm back to square one. Remember earlier on, I created a test collection, which had a piece of content that was actually in two collections. That's still here. In this case, it's a project that's here in my collection. And so now I'm able to sort of browse that and just get on with my work as, as I should be able to. So that's pretty much collections in a nutshell. There's plenty of options and capabilities with this. I think this will be a really, really cool feature. I think it'll be a really nice additional thing to see. It's interesting that it gets its own little sort of space here and projects, for example, don't get any sort of love in this respect. So I'm interested to see how Tableau really developed this further. I've, I've heard of the concept, especially at conference of spaces. I'd love this to become sort of more personal and sort of more interesting for people to use so that when you log into Tableau server, you can go up here and just set this particular collection as your own start page rather than having to set one start page for absolutely everyone. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Check out all the other videos on 2021.2. Um, I hope you're enjoying the content. If there's a video about something you'd like me to make that isn't about uh, Tableau or even 2021.2, then please get in touch. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you later.